Hello everyone and welcome to Nautical Academy. In today's video, I will discuss the effect of the slack tank on a ship's stability, known as the free surface effect. This will include how to determine the free surface correction and free surface moment. Free surface effect refers to the tendency of liquids in partially filled tanks or compartments to shift when a vessel rolls or pitches, affecting its stability. If this is the ship's transverse section, let us assume that the ship is floating in still water at upright condition and this is the waterline. The double bottom tank is partially filled with water and let's say the center of gravity of the water inside the tank is here and we will mark it with a small letter G. If this is the ship center line, and this point is the ship center of gravity, marked with capital letter G, where the total weight of the ship acts vertically downward. The geometrical center of underwater volume is the center of buoyancy, marked with capital letter B, where the buoyancy force acts vertically upward. For a ship to float, the buoyancy force should be equal to the total weight that acts vertically downward. When a ship tilts or rolls, the ship's center of buoyancy, capital B moves to some point at the low side to be 1. The liquid within a partially filled tank tends also to move to the lower side, causing a shift of the center of gravity of water inside the tank. As small g moves, the vessel's center of gravity, capital G also moves parallel to the movement of small g. Let us replay this animation again. How the ship's center of gravity moves together at the center of gravity of the water inside the tank, and the ship's center of buoyancy. Now the point where the buoyancy force and the ship's centerline intersect is called the transverse metacenter, capital M. And the horizontal distance between the ship's center of gravity, capital G, and the vertical line of buoyancy force is called the riding lever, GZ, which determines the ability of the ship to return to its upright position when she is tilted. This is supposed to be the riding lever if the water inside the tank does not move, or if the water is in solid form or frozen. But since the water inside the slack tank is free to move, due to its movement, the ship's center of gravity, capital G moves in a parallel direction with the center of gravity of water inside the tank. Thus, the present riding lever of the ship at this moment is from G1 to Z1. If we extend the downward vertical force upward, intersecting the center line, the point of intersection will be GV, or the virtual rise of the ship's center of gravity. The horizontal distance between GV to ZV is equal to G1 and Z1. The movement of the water inside the slack tank when the ship is healed results in a decrease in the ship's riding lever. This is supposed to be the ship's stability triangle if the water inside the tank cannot move or the tank is pressed up, which is bigger compared to the stability triangle when the water is free to move inside the tank. The result is a reduction in the ship's stability due to slack tank. In this case, we can say that the distance between GV to M is the fluid GM, while the distance between G to M is the solid GM. The distance between capital G to GV is the virtual loss of GM or usually we call it a free surface correction, or FSC. If we subtract the free surface correction FSC from the solid GM, the difference is fluid GM. According to the International Code on Intact Stability, it is mandatory for passenger and cargo ships that their initial metacentric height, or fluid GM, should not be less than 0.15 meter. I have made a separate video about GM or metacentric height, and how to calculate the fluid GM, kindly check the link in the description. So a ship with a partially filled tank or slack tank, when healed or tilted at sea, will have a loss of metacentric height, called a virtual loss of GM, also known as the free surface correction, FSC. As we know, by subtracting the free surface correction from solid GM, we can obtain the fluid GM. 
This is the formula on how to determine the free surface correction. Where FSC is the virtual loss of GM or free surface correction. FSM stands for free surface moment. Capital W is the ship's displacement. The unit of free surface moment is in ton meter, while the unit of displacement is in ton. If both units of ton are cancelled, the remaining unit is a meter, that is why the unit of free surface correction is in meter. Usually, the unit of GM is in meter, so subtracting the free surface correction which is in meter, the fluid GM is in meter also. This is the formula to determine the free surface moment. Where small letter I is the moment of inertia, often termed as the second moment of area. And DT is the density of liquid inside the tank. Remember that the unit of the moment of inertia is in meter, raised to the power of 4, and the density is in tons per cubic meter. If we cancel both these units, we still have a remaining unit of meter. That is why the unit of free surface moment is in ton meter. For a rectangular tank, the moment of inertia is equal to the length, times the breadth cube, divided by 12. Where I is the moment of inertia. L for the length of the tank. B for the breadth of the tank, and 12 is constant. Let us simplify this formula for a rectangular shaped tank. GGV or free surface correction is equal to length, times breadth cube, divided by 12, times displacement, and the quotient will be multiplied by the density of liquid inside the tank. Let us calculate this simple problem. A ship's rectangular tank has a length of 20 meters and a breadth of 15 meters and is partially filled with salt water. If the ship has a final displacement of 25,000 tons, with a kg of 8.5 meters, and her final km is 8.9 meters. Calculate the fluid GM. First, we need to determine the free surface moment, which is equal to the moment of inertia, times the density of liquid inside the tank. For the moment of inertia, we have length, times the breadth cube of the tank, divided by 12, then times density. We have now 20 meters, times 15 meters to the power of 3, divided by 12, times 1.025 tons per cubic meter. So we have 20 meters, times 3,375 cubic meters, divided by 12, times 1.025 tons per cubic meter. We have now 5,625 meters to the power of 4, times 1.025 tons per cubic meter. Canceling cubic meter with meter to the power of 4, we still have a remaining unit of meter. And the free surface moment is 5,765.625 ton meter. Let us now proceed to the free surface correction. We have 5,765.625 ton meter for the free surface moment, divided by 25,000 tons which is the ship's final displacement. The free surface correction is 0.231 meter. Let us now proceed to the initial metacentric height, which is km minus kg. For the km we have 8.9 meters, and for the kg we have 8.5 meters. The gm is 0.400 meter, and this gm is solid. If we subtract the free surface correction which is 0.231. The fluid gm is 0.169 meter. This method can be used for a rectangular shaped tank. How about those tanks that are not rectangular in shape? On board, we have a tank sounding table in which we will just extract the value of the free surface moment, whether the tank is rectangular or not. If you want to know how to extract the value of free surface moment using the ship's tank sounding table, and a more detailed explanation on how to calculate the fluid GM, I have made a separate video for these, kindly check the link in the description. That's all for now guys, if you like this video, do not forget to like and share, and if you are new to this channel, do not forget to click the subscribe button, thank you for watching, bye.